Hello everybody and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is a fortress submitted on the Discord by Cooper Cape. If you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a peek at, you can do that via the uh, link down in the description of this video. It's my Discord, it's discord.gg slash blind. Of course, you could use just the join code directly if you want to be fancy, but anything works. Just find the door fortress, DF save sharing room, and simply upload your fortress. Now, you're going to do that via going into the save Save folder of your Dwarf Fortress install and then uh, zipping that folder, renaming it is optimal, but you don't have to, and then simply upload it to the server. Or if you don't have enough space, you can do it via any save sharing service of your choice or Dwarf Fortress File Depot, which is a public website which you can find quite easily through the Googles. Now, uh, this is a unique one. Now, some of you, if you've been scrolling up and down that particular room, you might be going... Man, there's a lot of stuff here, and I'm a little bit behind! This fortress was uploaded on the 6th, and it's now the 13th as of the time of recording. I, fingers crossed, I can keep up, because, my god, there's a lot of these. I might need to do some sort of marathon at some point where I just record a whole bunch of these on stream or something. Would that be something you'd be interested in? I don't know. But anyway, this video right here is focused on the fortress, uh, which is uh, referred to as Brown Rim of the roughness of domain of the impervious lances, and they refer to it as the Hanging City. Now, when we get into the fortress itself, it's a little bit unassuming. It's kind of just this lovely forested area with kind of a little river and, um, you know, the usual blood and skeletons and uh, evidence of violence that you get from a dwarven fortress. And then we have this little drawbridge here and a locked trap door that goes into a ramp. And this little ramp goes down, and it goes down, and it goes down. Well, we should back up a little bit because there's a uh, interesting site over here. So let's just go take a look at this. Well, this is kind of a interesting place. There's a little stairway in the middle. It's all locked. And we can take a peek around and see that, well, there's a lot of bedrooms. But if we hit the Z key, you'll notice that none of them are assigned anymore. This is an abandoned fortress, and I kind of I like this. This is definitely an area where they were doing something. Um, certainly, probably, I, I would assume, fortressy activities until the fortress got big enough that they didn't need to anymore. If we go one layer down, we can see that there's a whole bunch of coffins there. Definitely the casualties of construction. But um, we can also see uh, a harnessed water supply here coming from uh, uh, the uh, little river that is attached here, which is currently frozen. I'm assuming it just freezes because it is mid-autumn. I'm not sure if the whole thing freezes or if just part of it freezes, but regardless, we're going to go back to following that ramp. The ramp goes down, down, down a ways, uh, at which point we find a giant agitated hamster mutilated corpse. Uh, pretty typical dwarf and stuff. And then we get to this. And this is why I'm looking at this fortress, because it reminds me of one of my fortresses, Long Death. Long Death was a very long series that I did, which was a 400-something-year-old fortress, uh, which was just a giant hole in the ground, basically, with these giant suspended bridges. And I always wondered what Long Death would look like in this version of the game, and it's something that I'll never get to see. But what I do get to see is this, which is a similar idea, albeit not a giant hole in the ground. It's a huge, open, square thing with these big, constructed floor zones, we find our trading depot, we get to see a military barracks at the end of this giant bridge uh, held up by gem windows made of trillion cut rubies. Uh, how fancy. Um, many dwarves walking in along the rough siltstone road. They then enter into the fortress via this very pretty um, set of, uh, like, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, engraved floors. And then they get to the end of the walkway here. And uh, I should also note that there are some stairs on either side of this that are dumping water down uh, into the, the lower layers. Um, and as we eventually work our way down, uh, we can see that everything kind of connects. And there is a way down in here, which they are using for power. So the water down here kind of flows down through and into here. And then you can see them powering here. The the power then goes a long, a long walkway for this lovely little mist generator down here, I would assume. Um, it seems like it's powered from above because the power line goes up and then down and then into the mist generator for this lovely, lovely, lovely uh, butter of knives, which is a tavern. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, super gaudy. It's suspended above this huge, slowly growing uh, mushroom farm due to all the scattered mud. 
Um, as and once again, I'm kind of struck with the problem of where actually is the front door? <laughs> um, this happened to me in the last fortress I looked at, where I was like, "Where are the there? I don't, I don't see the there." And now I'm sitting here and I'm going, "I once again don't actually know where the front door to this fort is." <laughs> I'm assuming that there's a, a, a way from like this layer to uh, down into here, but let's actually just do it this way. Let's let let's let's jump over into squads. Let's set all of this massive number of squads to not train. So let, let's actually just um, select all of these because there's so many of them. And we are just going to uh, jump over to schedule and we're gonna set them all to off duty, which I'm assuming actually is just the Helmed Haze, these guys right here. But let's just, let's just see where they go. So they're gonna head kind of down here over a ways and they're gonna go through these doors here, and I'm gonna go, okay, so where exactly are you gonna head now? They're don't, oh, okay, there's a ramp, I understand. Let's use this dwarf to kind of give us a little bit of a tour. I'm kind of curious what this dwarves, a day in the life of a dwarf in the hanging cities uh, gonna look like. A uh, population of 88, it is, the mi it is mid autumn right now. This dwarf has definitely seen happier times. Uh, they appear to be storing their goods uh, down here. Um, and uh, they, they are definitely putting their stuff away. Very much a long walk to get all of your stuff put away, which actually is kind of rough uh, for any dwarves that are trying to, uh, you know, deal with any kind of siege situation because they're going to have to scamper around many, many, many different layers and levels to go put all of their stuff away. Definitely could use some improvement on that front, but I don't really expect a fortress of this size and style to be particularly optimal. I definitely would expect a fortress like this to be very... Um, in optimal, I guess it's you know it's a lot of long hallways from place to place, uh, definitely scattered around over multiple levels. Well, as this dwarf uh, becomes rather naked, I'm going to just simply move the camera around a little bit, and we're going to kind of give ourselves a little bit of a tour here. We've got stonecutters workshops, a big old stone stockpile there. If I move one layer up, we can see many workshops with crafting. Definitely, you have to value your balance. I'd love to know how many dwarves have actually fallen uh, due to either rough circumstance or a stray cat being a little bit mischievous. Uh, we have many... Uh, other stockpiles around here, as well as uh, all of these kind of temples over here at the end. I'm going to try and see what I can glean from each level, and then we'll move down. We've got a dormitory over here, as well as some very well-appointed bedrooms, uh, which just kind of go up and along the ways here uh, to the, of course, tavern, and then the mist generator in the tavern. And then down beneath the tavern, we have this dining hall, which is extraordinarily well appointed platinum tables and platinum statues in the middle if we move down one layer we can hear that an artifact has just begun uh, shamir the miner has begun a fey mood uh we we have even more well appointed bedrooms very similar to how i did the bedrooms in in long death as well and you can also see somebody here really 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 likes this flower roast and cheese and strawberry plants definitely a fan of food right there uh we're gonna move along here and then we can see even more bedrooms it's a shame that this that this one dwarf at the end here has to walk all the way along to their bedroom but you know such is the way of things right we got uh uh, guild halls down here and as, as well as that central ramp then we have uh, a bunch of uh, furnaces as well as a bunch of metalwork shops um, and then you know more stockpiles and then we move down to the lower layers and we can see even more bedrooms a lot of travel time in this fortress I think that's that's going to be kind of the, the biggest deal is going to be travel time and uh, the main pull of frame rate is there's just so much for them to look at and see and then down here, uh, we can see our water drainage, which uh, goes down into here and then off the edge of the map uh, through those fortifications right there, through the through the pumps. And then, of course, they can vent the water down into the bottom here if need be. Uh, this fortress is, like, gifted with infinite food, too, because, like, if you ever need just, like, some plump helmets or some pigtail, you just run down here and just use the gather tool and just thunk and just gather all of that up. Kind of cool, actually, watching the mud scatter. I never really thought I would like looking at this. If I was building this fortress, I would have made this slightly rounded on the outsides, and I would I would multi-layer this and definitely dump more water into it to kind of build my own cavern terrarium. And then I would go, like, kind of crazy with it. I would probably try and catch some uh, crundles and release them into here and, and tame them and have, like, my own tame cavern terrarium. But uh, instead, it's not me playing, so we've got multiple layers of stuff dug out down here. Very much strip mined. And then as we go down, as we go down, 
uh, we kind of hit the bottom there, and then there's a secondary staircase that just goes down a little bit further until it finally uh, hits the first cavern layer that this fortress has discovered, which probably is the first cavern layer. It kind of looks like it, although it may actually be the second cavern layer based on the depth and the fauna. The fact that we've got goblin caps down here is a little bit strange. It's normally just the fungi woods uh, and the tower caps, but, you know, it could be the first cavern layer. Um, as for second cavern layer, it hasn't dug any deeper yet, so really, I, I don't really have any criticisms because this is one of those fortresses that I kind of look at and I go, all right, this is just, this is very much kind of somebody's somebody just wanted to build this it's not necessarily going to run well or uh perform well but it's certainly a neat construction project and it's definitely unique it's a bit boxy for me uh design wise but you know there's a lot of neat things going on They're like this central water tank um that is powering uh the, with water flows that's then draining down through these stairways into the drains that whole thing's pretty damn cool i, I like what i like looking at all of the different um even though i don't think they're actually connected to anything these uh the axles being used as ideas something i would do and i'm just gonna see if i can grab one is under furniture. I, is it under furniture or is it under construction? It's under construction. There are vertical bars. I would actually widen some of these, um, like especially like these walkways here, widen them and then construct vertical bars because the neat thing about vertical bars, I'm just going to use steel because there's uh, a decent amount of them. The neat thing about vertical bars is they actually change um, based on uh, the angle that they're constructed at so you see these so like it, for these like thin ones i would actually widen them to threes and then construct vertical bars kind of like this because they end up looking pretty badass pretty quickly uh and are actually one of my more favored changes uh from this version so i think that there's a lot of really cool things that you could do uh with the vertical bars in in this design um just going through and like you know, can, can, kind of constructing a uh, a neat sort of railing system for a fortress like this. I, I think that that could be pretty cool. Um, but aside from that, I don't really have any real suggestions for this, you know? M maybe try and make this into more of a cavern terrarium instead of just, like, a square floor. Um, but aside from that, like, build cool stuff. This is, this is a neat little fort. I like it. I, I mean, the screenshots caught me off guard because I hadn't seen anything like it yet, and you know, that's that's what this game's about, is making stuff that's cool. Making stuff that's cool that you'd like to look at, and then make more of it, because that's just Dwarf Fortress. If you want to see more videos like this of uh, other cool fort designs, definitely check out this YouTube channel. Uh, there's a growing playlist of these. They're slowly getting bigger and longer, and there's more and more and more of them. As well as, you know, if you would like to send in a save for me to have a peek at. If it is heavily modded, uh, just please make sure that you zip your mods folder alongside of the save itself, because I might not be able to load it. I've had some luck with loading modded saves, but some luck where I just can't. Um, so definitely, if, you ha if you're using a bunch of mods, please include your saves folder, as well as the mods folder. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you would like to see more of them, once again, check out the YouTube channel. And if you want to see my face while I play video games on the internet, check me out at twitch.tv slash blindirl. And at least as of time of recording, uh, on the 19th of January at 2 p.m. Pacific time, Tarn Adams will be joining me, and we will be talking about Dwarf Fortress. So if you would like to catch that live, the 19th on Thursday, and uh, it'll go live on this YouTube channel the next day in the morning. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.